This girl notices that her hair is growing too fast. It causes her unbearable pain. But as soon as she tries to cut it off, her hair gets out of control. A dark-skinned girl named Anna plays a radio host in her older cousin's room. That night, the girl wants to straighten her curly hair, so her sister applies a particular product to her strands. When it's time to wash it off, Anna feels an intense burning sensation, and in addition, her hair falls out in shreds instead of straightening. This leaves Anna with a lifelong scar on her head and horrible memories. About 15 years passed, and 1989 arrives. As an adult, Anna works for the Los Angeles TV station Culture, which promotes the popular music of black performers to the masses. With all her enthusiasm, the girl never manages to achieve success in her career, and the channel itself cannot boast high ratings. Anna almost negotiates a promotion, but at that moment, there is a change in the management of Kultura. Notably, the channel owner is white, and almost all the employees are black. During a general meeting, Anna learns that her boss, who has championed black culture, is stepping down. Her place is taken by former supermodel Zora. The channel will now be called Cult and focus more on white viewers. Each employee will have to be interviewed and prove their usefulness in the new environment. The workday begins. Everyone is discussing the hair extensions of the dark-skinned singer Sandra, whose music videos are constantly broadcast on the channel. Anna's colleagues admire the singer's straight hair. Many dreams of such a hairstyle. Afterward, Anna's boyfriend, Julius, who works as a host, informs her that he has found a new girlfriend. He devalues his relationship with Anna, which seriously hurts the girl. In the evening, Anna returns home to a rented apartment in a dysfunctional neighborhood. She watches a program hosted by Julius. The next day, Anna goes to an interview with Zora. At first, the girl acts stiff but soon loosens up and confidently suggests the idea for an excellent new show. She even provides a plan with a script and a list of guests. Zora likes the idea. She offers Anna the job of assistant producer. But Zora is uncomfortable with her hair and clothing style. In her opinion, Anna's image should become more glamorous. After the interview, Anna finds a business card from a hairdresser, where she can have her hair done like Sandra's. In the evening, the girl comes to visit her uncle and aunt. Anna's sister and her husband also come over for a family get-together. Those gathered to discuss the folk tales of black people invented during times of slavery. Anna believes there is too much superstition. However, her uncle insists that these tales are filled with wisdom. They form a culture and a connection to their ancestors. In his opinion, it is essential for modern black people not to lose their identity. As a farewell, he gives Anna a book of fairy tales to read. The next day, the girl goes to the hair salon. Hair extensions in a high-end salon are expensive, so now the girl does not have enough money to pay her rent, but that does not stop her. A hairdresser named Vergi offers the girl to choose the right hair. Anna senses unique energy from one set and chooses it. Vergi warns the girl that it will hurt, but Anna is willing to put up with it all. The procedure is indeed excruciating. Anna clenches her teeth and sobs incessantly. She holds on quite well until Vergi begins to sew new hair onto the Brady frame. It is as if the hairdresser is intentionally wounding and piercing the skin on Anna's head. Blood comes out. The girl recalls a nightmare from her childhood when shreds of hair fell out after an unsuccessful straightening procedure. Anna faints. When she comes to, the girl looks in the mirror and marvels at her new hairstyle. She admires Vergi's work. The hairdresser immediately hands Anna a bottle of care product and strictly forbids her to wet her hair. She also warns her that her scalp will be very sore at first. At home, Anna takes a painkiller. Her landlord knocks insistently on the door of her apartment, and he has raised the rent and demands another $500. But Anna has no money, so the man mutters threats under his breath and leaves. For the night, the girl decides to read a fairy tale about a girl with hair of moss. In it, the heroine finds moss-like hair in the forest and makes herself a wig. Looking at the picture of the girl's hair choking the man, Anna falls asleep, and she is tormented by a nightmarish dream. The attitude of her colleagues to the girl changes in a positive direction. Zora also notices Anna's new hairstyle. Thanks to this, she invites the girl to an important meeting of producers and presenters. Anna accidentally injures her finger until it bleeds and notices that her hair is sucked into the cut. She pulls out the naughty strand and rushes to the meeting. Here, Zora suggests abolishing the show dedicated to black women. The host is incredibly outraged by such a decision. Few staff members are willing to change and comply with Zora's new demands. Meanwhile, Anna begins to have an unbearable headache and is forced to take pills in front of everyone. Zora states Anna's ideas almost verbatim, passing them off as her own. In her office, Zora reprimands Anna for her silence during the meeting but softens as she assesses the girl's hair. Anna asks if she will be allowed to host the show, but Zora is not yet ready to give the girl that opportunity. Anna indignantly blurts out that Julius initially worked as a secretary, but he had no problem being given the role of host. Zora calmly explains the reason. It's because Julius is sleeping with her. Anna is shocked by this revelation but does not give away her rage in front of her boss. 
After this conversation, the girl rushes to Julia's dressing room. She angrily confronts her ex and says that Zora is old enough to be the boy's mother. Julius is surprised, as the girl has never yelled at him before. He asks Anna not to exaggerate and not to take their relationship seriously. In the evening, her sister comes to visit the girl. She admires Anna's new hairstyle. The girls have dinner and chat. The sister takes the book of fairy tales and gives Anna tapes of their childhood conversations. The sister leaves, and Anna turns on the tape of the night she first tried to straighten her hair. It turns out that the girl didn't lock her door. A drunken landlord freely walks into her apartment. Anna wants to give him the rest of the money, but that's not what the man wants. He pushes the girl onto the bed and kisses her. Anna wants to turn on the music under the pretext that the apartment has thin walls. Going over to the television, she quietly picks up a knife. The man pounces on Anna, but the girl stabs him in the shoulder. Out of anger, the landlord pushes Anna to the floor. She immediately recalls a nightmare from her childhood when her hair fell out. It is as if a demon possesses the girl. Her hair entangles the man's arms and throws him off. The girl sees that one of her strands has lengthened and is embedded in the man's wound. As the hair drains all the blood from his body, Anna manages to pull the strand out. The bloodied man dies, and the girl throws his body out the window directly into a garbage can. The next day, Anna sees paramedics and police officers outside the house. They take away the body of the owner of the apartment, and the neighbors are only happy to see him dead. There is a meeting at work. One of the presenters breaks down and flatly refuses to change her style to suit Zora and her new routines. Anna persuades her friend to stay on the channel, arguing that changing is fun. The girl promises to think about it and leaves. Left alone, Anna tries to convince herself that the landlord was an evil man and that his death didn't hurt anyone. After a while, Anna manages to assemble a team to work in a new format. She reports to Zora about it. Only the primary host is missing, and Anna hopes this position will be entrusted to her. But no answer from Zora yet. At home, Anna tries to brush her hair. She has stopped oiling her hair with Vergi, and the quality of her hair has deteriorated. Anna begins to menstruate. As soon as the girl decides to use a pad, the hair smells blood and climbs into her panties. Once saturated, her hair strangely frizzes and becomes shiny and manageable again. Anna arrives at a party celebrating the success of Cult. Everyone there is happy to see the girl smiling and complimenting her. Anna's former boss, named Edna, comes to the party. She is unhappy that her democratic channel has become a glamorous hangout. Anna says that under Zora's leadership, her salary has increased, and she has more opportunities. Edna feels that Anna is betraying herself and her black identity by going along with Zora. Anna is angry and leaves. Back at the party, Anna sees Julius flirting with some blonde. Immediately, Anna is approached by the channel owner and promises that the girl will soon become an anchor along with Zora. An angry Zora runs away from the party, followed by Julius. The couple quarrels, and the woman leaves. Julius approaches Anna, asks for a cigarette, and complains about Zora. He admits that he screwed up by breaking up with Anna and inviting the girl to his house. She agrees. The girl can't accept his betrayal at her ex's house and wants to leave. But Julius kisses her and leads her to the bed. Anna puts a mask on the guy and sits on top of him. During sex, the girl asks Julius uncomfortable questions about Zora and the blonde at the party. The guy gets aroused, and Anna gets angry, ties Julius up with her hair, and kills him with shards of glass. The hair drinks the guy's blood. Anna realizes what she has done and runs away. Outside, the frightened girl calls her sister and asks her to read the tale of the girl with moss hair. With her new hair, the heroine of the tale became very attractive. The girl walked up to the beaten, bloody slave, and her hair began to drink blood from the body. It turned out that it wasn't moss but the hair of ancient witches. They need blood to grow strong and enslave the human body. The hair suffocated the girl and subjugated her. Her mind has been taken over by witches. Anna does not like this story. Soon she goes to an inexpensive barbershop and asks the master to remove the hair that has been grown. This is also where Edna comes in. Anna's conscience overwhelms her, and she begs her former boss to forgive her. She wants to be herself again, and Edna forgives her and compliments her new style. But Edna believes that in an ideal world, a woman could wear any hairstyle she wanted without conforming to society's demands. Anna agrees with her. The hairdresser tries to cut the girl's hair, but it gets out of hand and kills the master. Seeing this, Edna tries to run away, but her bloodthirsty hairs also catch up. Anna loses control of herself and kills the second hairdresser. Her hair sucks the blood out of all the victims. Anna comes to her senses and screams in terror. The girl runs out into the street and calls Zora, for she was the one who advised her to get her hair done by Vergi. The woman does not answer her home phone, so Anna runs to the office. She finds the body of one of her colleagues and Zora sitting next to her. The woman confesses that her hair is out of control, too. Sometimes they inspire a sense of hunger in Zora, and she begins to kill. Over time, the hunger only intensifies. Zora, like Anna, is constantly plagued by nightmares because the hair wants to enslave their minds. Zora becomes nervous and decides to get it over with. She grabs a pair of scissors and tries to cut off her hair. But the feral strands suffocate the woman and then hang her up. The next day, the girl is late for work, and no one here can find Zora. 
Anna will have to go on live television for the first time as an anchor in her place. The audience is thrilled with the girl, who artfully hides her hair's bloodiness. At the end of the broadcast, Anna notices a live Zora in the crowd but tries to remain calm. The show ends, everyone disperses, and Zora disappears somewhere, too. Afterward, Anna sees Zora in her office. The girl goes up there and witnesses Zora's hair killing one of the channel's employees. Zora is no longer in control, ancient witches have occupied her head. Anna runs away, but her boss's hair follows her on her heels. The girl hides behind a door and sees her colleagues entangled in her hair. They look like zombies. The girl leaves this room and tries again to hide from Zora's rampaging hair. Anna runs all over the building but has no way to get out. Finally, the girl finds an axe, swings it beside her, and nearly injures one of her co-workers named Brooke. She's been sitting in the room with the zombies because she thought they were having a fun party and was trying not to arouse suspicion. Brooke isn't going to die today because she hasn't been to church in 15 years. After these words, the hares catch up with the girl and drag her into Zora's office. Anna follows Brooke with an axe. Soon she finds Zora, and she releases Brooke and points her hair in Anna's direction. Both women's wigs tend to tangle with each other, but Anna manages to control her mind and swings the axe at Zora. The axe immediately falls out of the girl's hands, but she grabs the shoe and drives the heel into Zora's head. Just when it seems that the danger has passed, another leading lady, who has been extending Vergie's hair, appears from the elevator and kills Brooke. Zora comes to life. Another woman enslaved by hair joins them, and the three witches chase Anna. The girl manages to hide in the sound man's booth and blocks the door. The witches are standing right behind the glass and want to kill Anna. The girl falls to the floor and accidentally notices a gun under the table. She grabs the gun, jumps up, and points it at the witches. But the gun turns out to be a simple lighter. Seeing this, the witches try to break the glass. Anna lies on the floor again and smokes a cigarette, now that she has the lighter handy. The glass cracks just as the girl notices the fire alarm sensor on the ceiling and remembers not to get her hair wet. She brings the fire to the sensor and runs the water. Under the water jets, all the women's hair rages and tries to kill its wearers. Anna grabs a pair of scissors in time to cut off her wig. She then leaves the sound man's room and looks at the dying witches. Nothing can help them anymore. Later, the girl discovers that the hair product contained pig's blood, necessary for witch's hair to gain strength for action. Anna also manages to find out that the tale of the girl with the moss hair is accurate. Once upon a time, trees with witch's hair grew on one slave owner's property. That man died, and his lands went to his sons. One of them is precisely the owner of the cult canal. This white man thinks he can use plants and people as he pleases, so he sells witch's hair to a barbershop. While Anna was reading a tale of witch hair, her sister went to get her hair extensions at Vergie's. Thank you all for watching, subscribe to the channel, give it a like, suggest your movies in the comments, and we'll try to provide you with quality content as often as possible. See you all soon.